today, I will begin the journey to find whether it's possible to beat the second adventure of Brutal Mode EX Plus with only evolved plants. Every level will be more difficult than before since they all have one extra flag and we will have no access to the best plants in the game like Doomshroom. Hopefully this isn't too hard. Or impossible. Let's begin on 1-1, one -one, where we familiarize ourselves with all the evolved plants we have access to, as this is also my first time using them. Obviously, I have disabled Dave's pre-selected plants for this challenge. Instead of regular sunflowers, we now have to plant primal sunflowers, which generate 40 sun instead of 25. However, they cost 25 more, so we have to wait for one naturally falling sun at the beginning of each level before we can plant our first primal sunflower. But it's not like this lower sun production at the start of each level matters for now, since the first few levels consist of only basic zombies and conets, so I easily beat both the first and second level with the evolved chomper, which functions identically to the snapdragon from PvZ2 but costs 250 sun, and these guys completely trivialize any amount of basic zombies because they have ridiculously high splash damage. It's also easy partially thanks to Time Warp, which can teleport all zombies back to the start for a cost of only 75 sun. The same story speaks for itself in level 1-3 with some minor adjustments to adapt to Conan Zombie's appearance. I now also use Elemental Shrooms in front of Snapdragons to add even more damage to do enough damage against the tougher Coneheads. Elemental Shrooms are a more powerful version of Gloom Shroom that deal more damage and don't get frozen by Zombonis. They can also switch to a different state that allow them to slow down zombies and also sometimes knocking them back, but deals less damage. On top of using elemental shrooms, I also utilize the Hypno Nut to protect our defense. It functions just like a tall nut, but instead of damaging zombies that eat it, it spawns a hypnotized zombie when damaged. This setup shreds through basics and conets like butter thanks to their low hit points. It got a bit boring to repeat the same thing for 1-4, so I decided to use shadow plants to beat it instead. The Shadow Pea Shooter functions like a weaker Snow Pea without a Moonflower boost. However, once powered up by a Moonflower, which is the Evolve Plant turn, Shadow Plants like Shadow Pea Shooters gain a huge increase in power, now shooting fumes that slow instead of Snow Peas. These Shadow Pea Shooters are absolutely amazing against hordes of zombies with low hit points for obvious reasons, as they are basically just Fume Shrooms, but even better. Obviously, we're skipping over all conveyor belt levels since they are irrelevant for the purposes of this challenge, so we're going straight to 1-6. 1-6 introduces the pole vaulting zombie, and these guys are top tier threats in this challenge because we have no access to Gravebuster. If we let these guys leap over a plant, there's no way for us to remove the gravestone it makes. It is in this level we now branch off from the standard one-type plant spam strategy into something a bit more complex. I am now utilizing both elemental shrooms as well as shadow pea shooters to slow down zombies, making sure to keep our hypno nuts healthy so they can block off pole vaulters. Being very diligent in the early game, I was able to plant a full column of hypno nuts to fully eliminate the threat of pole vaulters in this level fairly easily. Now, 1-7 is basically the same as 1-6 but has one more flag. The early game was also just elemental shrooms as well as shadow pea shooters with hypno nuts, but we now need to integrate more plants to deal with the whole extra flag of zombies. I chose to use the sniper pea, which has infinite range and strong targeting priority, dealing 500 damage every 3 seconds to the strongest zombie on the screen. This will help filter out the strongest zombies from the horde and allow shadow pea shooters to clean up the weaker zombies with less hit points namely the basics and coneheads, since pole vaulters are considered stronger than coneheads in the strong targeting priority. This beats the level very easily without pole vaulters even touching our hypno nuts later on in the level. And I'll just skip 1-8 to go over 1-9 immediately since the strategies used are identical. With the introduction of buckethead zombies, we now have to watch out for pumpkin zombies and also target zombies which can be absolutely devastating as we have no access to Umbrella Leaf. The general strategy remains the same as before, with us going for Shadow Pea Shooters as well as Elemental Shrooms and also getting Sniper Peas. On top of this defense, I also needed to use my Evolved Cherry Bomb to thin out the crowds a bit. It splits into 6 smaller explosive fragments after exploding and explodes elsewhere. Even all of this wasn't enough, so I replaced all my Primal Sunflowers with Sniper Peas to maximize damage, and that's finally enough to beat the last daytime level. 
So far, this has just been a complete joke in terms of difficulty, but it will only get harder from here on out. Nighttime is the start of the extremely tough part of this challenge, as the early game is much harsher at nighttime. With sun no longer falling from the sky, we need to wait until Gold Bloom comes off cooldown to even start planting primal sunflowers, significantly slowing down our economy. We also have no access to Puff Shroom, so we can't even defend off the first few waves other than use lawnmowers to kill off several zombies. In fact, this level is so tough. I had already spent 2 hours off stream practicing level 2-1 before even playing this live because I had to make sure it was at least somewhat feasible to beat so the video doesn't just end here. This is why I've already tried multiple different strategies and settled on using Dusk Blob or Spam. Similar to in Go with the Flow, the best way to deal with newspaper zombies is with Camish Pole to ensure they can't get angry. Even with a semi-optimal strategy, it was incredibly difficult because Gramophone zombies made it extremely hard for us to kill the basics and coneheads. Using a Fragment Cherry to kill them was also a death sentence as the collateral damage from the fragments easily anger newspaper zombies. This is like my 20th time playing this level, so mind you, I already knew what the best way to play through this level was, and it is still absolutely ridiculous because the early game is damn near impossible with how little damage Dusk Lobbers do. We are piss poor and at best can only afford one Shadow Shroom as a defense against one zombie, and we easily get overwhelmed in every lane all at once. Even with absolutely busted plants like Magical Buster that can allow us to freely pick up and move a plant to any new location, newspaper zombies are still relentlessly annoying because most of our plants will make them angry. But I did eventually find a way to beat the level. My strategy revolved around utilizing Time Warp and Hypno Nut stalling to make use of the Magical Buster's ability to allow us to move around our defense at a very low cost. This is possible as the zombies spawned by Hypno Nuts will remain in the lane they were spawned from, so we can just move our Hypno Nut to another lane to try and spawn another hypnotized zombie there as defense. This strategy is very cost efficient and will become a key part of how we defend early game and nighttime levels. The later part of the level is pretty much the same thing but with Dusk Lobber support. It's a lot more Hypno Nut juggling and trying to make sure none of them get overwhelmed by angry newspaper zombies, and also a lot of RNG to hope that Hypno Nuts will spawn a hypnotized newspaper zombie and not a gargantuar or football zombie, as they are ineffective at defending newspaper zombies. With no lawnmowers remaining, we actually managed to beat this hell of a level which took me a bunch of practice attempts, and we still have 7 more night levels to go. Level 2-2 is essentially Level 2-1 with an extra flag and also buckethead zombies. It is certainly impossible to do Dusk Lobber Spam again, because there is no way we can break through pumpkin zombies due to them constantly healing up all zombies around it. What we need is a lot of stalling. Instead of brute forcing our way through all the healers with damage, we need to utilize Butterpole as well as Elemental Shroom's Ice version so newspaper zombies take as long as possible before getting too far that we need to deal with them. We can do that now, since most newspaper zombies spawned from 2-1 are replaced by buckethead spawns in this level. On our first try, we were already able to make it to the first flag without having a single newspaper zombie causing any trouble for us. Surprisingly, this defense was actually doing great despite us not having a hypno nut in every lane to block off all newspaper zombies. That is, until a catapult zombie descended from absolutely nowhere to sit on top of my hypno nut. It was at this moment that he knew. Stop it. Get some help. Mind you, this level is almost just as impossible as 2-1, because instead of losing to newspaper spam, now you lose to the endless wave of bucketheads as the pumpkin zombie strengthens every zombie, making it nearly impossible to stop because using fragment cherry only angers newspaper zombies that we can't filter out, making us lose once again. Sometimes, it is actually ridiculous to see how impossible it is to deal with the pumpkin zombies that will keep nighting up every single zombie and make it impossible for us to kill anything. And that's because we don't have Doom Shroom. So, how do we beat this level? We need to adjust our Elemental Shroom's attacks. Going either all in on stalling or all in on damage doesn't work. Since going all in on damage just makes our Hypno Knights die too quickly, and going all in on stalling ends up making us lose to the various healers in this level. What I did was to alternate between the fire and an ice version of the elemental shrimps to balance out on both the damage and stalling components, evenly spreading out the damage across all lanes. 
This ensures that we can sufficiently kill off zombies even if they are getting healed up, but also not let newspaper zombies eat right through our hypno nuts by just stalling them slightly. Sometimes, a balance of both is what we need, not just focusing on one area of strength as we want to cover as many weaknesses as possible. Now we finally made it through hell, 2-3 is just an easier version of 2-1, since screen door zombies basically just replace newspaper zombies. With no angry grandfathers to worry about, dusk lobbers absolutely trivialize the level as to them, screen door zombies are just basic zombies. The next level, 2-4, is just a slightly harder version of 1-7. Once again, the screen door zombies are irrelevant to us since elemental shrooms as well as shadow pea shooters completely invalidate their ability. It just ends up being a slightly harder early game where we sacrifice all our lawnmowers to make up for the reduced sun production so that we can plant the same defense as we had in 1.7. There's really nothing more to say about screen door zombies other than they are too easily countered by literally every plant in the game that is not straight shooting. Football zombies make their return in 2.6, and thankfully, they're really easy to deal with. The early game is the exact same as in 2-3 and 2-4 where we sacrifice lawnmowers early for some production, but then move on to using Hypno Nuts when football zombies show up to get a hypnotized football zombie off our own as our defense. Soon after, it's pretty easy to get up Shadow Pea Shooters to shred through the basics and coneheads. Then we plant two elemental shrooms, Ice version, to stall out the zombies that make it far, and finally finish off our setup by getting a bunch of sniper peas to filter out the football zombies. Obviously, this setup works even better in 2-7 because screen door zombies die for free to our shadow pea shooters and that's the only zombie added in 2-7 compared to in 2-6. This setup is so strong that I can comfortably speed up the game by 10 times and just sit back and let the entire defense kill all the zombies. Dancing zombies make their return in 2-8 and this time we are in for much more trouble. Our only instant kill that can be used to specifically target them is Fragment Cherry, which is extremely expensive. Furthermore, Dancing Zombies can spawn many backup dancers over and over again if our damage is not even across all lanes. And we can get a situation like this where we are not doing enough damage to Michael Jackson, and it ends up spawning a massive grave ambush after having spawned three groups of backup dancers. We can avoid this problem by not bringing in Shadow Pea Shooters and instead using Elemental Shrooms and Instant Kills to defend early. When Dancing Zombies come, use a Time Warp to send all zombies back to clump them up together. I can then plant Fragment Cherry in the middle row to kill all backup dancers and dancing zombies in one go, avoiding any grave ambush spawns. Angry dancing zombies also no longer become a problem to us once we use a bowling nut to kill it for only 50 sun, and our elemental shrooms will clean up the side lanes where our Fragment Cherry didn't affect. This should easily get through the early game so we can start saving up for sniper peas and then also more elemental shrooms and hypno nuts. Even though dancing zombies can still spawn grave ambushes later on in the level, having a column of elemental shrooms and hypno nuts makes it enough for us to actually defend them off, so it's not even a problem anymore. This strategy actually allows us to clear 2-8 pretty easily. I then repeated the same time warp into Fragment Cherry play in 2-9 to deal with dancing zombies there, and all we need to do is basically just get back the same lineup as we did in 2-8, as it's basically just 2-8 but with screen door zombies and with one extra flag. I also learned to just use a bowling nut before a trophy dancer can spawn anything to instantly kill it without causing more problems. For the rest of the level, I just kept planting sniper peas to add extra damage, and that's how to beat the entirety of nighttime with only evolved plants. I won't be using any lily pads in this challenge to stay true to its name, making this a lot more harder in the upcoming few worlds where we get more planting restrictions, especially since every pool level is now basically unsodded. We have to kill zombies that are in the water somehow, so I'm bringing in plants that can attack lanes outside of their own. We have Elemental Shroom which attacks around itself, Dusk Lobber which attacks in free lanes at once when boosted by a Moonflower, and also the strongest evolved plant, the Sniper Pea, as it can target anywhere on the screen. There's also Fragment Cherry, which is an instant kill that can reach the water, and also Bowling Nut, though Bowling Nut is very limited in practice here. The first level of the world is just a tutorial, as we only have basics and coneheads, so it was very easy to beat with a Dusk Lobber Spam plus Elemental Shroom hybrid strategy. However, this challenge would very quickly become much harder. If you thought that pool was going to be a breeze to get through, get prepared because this is the hardest world yet. The return of newspaper zombies makes this level extremely tough, as we still have essentially no way to stop them in the early game, making our only choice to defend them early on is to just sacrifice a lawnmower. The addition of buckethead zombies to this level also makes it very bad for us, as any bungee ambush zombie spawn in the water caused by a target zombie will be essentially undefendable if they spawn too far in. 
A football zombie spawning in the same water lane from a bungee ambush actually happened twice in this run. But I was safe by having Time Warp fully recharged to send it all the way back to the right. However, I didn't manage to save this run as a bungee ambush gargantuar ended landing right on top of an elemental shroom. And the rest is history once I lost too much attacking power and ended up getting completely overrun by newspaper zombies galore that our defense can't handle. I tried utilizing snapdragons for their low cost and high damage in conjunction with hypnonuts in the early game, but unfortunately, even just one backup dancer spawned by a dancing conad zombie is enough to completely destroy a snapdragon, unlike an elemental shrew. Moreover, I had terrible RNG as there were so many newspaper zombies in the early game that I couldn't deal with, utterly destroying my dusk lobbers and ruining our chances of defending this waterborne newspaper zombie spawned by a bungee ambush. I then developed a new strategy that doesn't involve dusk lobbers as our main source of DPS in the water. Instead, I returned to the good old shadow pea shooters to slow down and filter out weak zombies. This alleviates the stress off our hypnonuts considerably, but sacrifices damage in the water lane. However, just two Elemental Shrooms Ice version is actually good enough to defend the entirety of all zombies in the pool anyways, so we're good on that department. I then make sure that our Hypno Nuts can stay nice and healthy by using a Magical Buster to pick up a Hypno Nut to then replant it immediately again, resetting its health back to full again. Relying on just Elemental Shrooms on the pool lanes was fine for pretty much the entire level, but an unlucky pole vaulter from a Bungie Ambush managed to spawn on an Elemental Shroom later in this level, making it basically impossible to defend the top pool lane. Thankfully, I was able to stall for time using a Time Warp, and that actually just straight up bought us enough time to get us to the final wave without losing our pool cleaner just yet, so that we could finish off the final wave with all the instant kills we have, and we managed to just barely beat level 3 2 in the pool. However, the problems don't end here, as more zombies are introduced. Oh no! Snorkel zombies and we cannot spend any wall plants to make them come out of the water. We are forced to use Dusk Lobber because they are the only defense we have against Snorkel zombies. Snorkel zombies in this challenge are, in fact, so dangerous that we need to go literally all in trying to do as much damage to them as possible as they move extremely fast. To even stand a chance, we need to plant at least two clusters of dusk lobbers to do as much damage as possible to snorkel zombies, and also simultaneously kill everything as fast as possible so they can't block our dusk lobber shots. I did this by moving our elemental shroom to the very front to filter out basics and coneheads. Even all of this isn't enough to deal with just a wave where there were 4 snorkel zombies. I had kind of realized this a bit too late and started pushing my defense even more forward for another cluster of dusk lobbers, and we already lost a pool cleaner. Thankfully, this actually happened very close to when the final wave came, so I was able to finish off the level by just sending my other pool cleaners in the water against the massive horde of snorkel zombies. If you thought the previous two levels were pretty bad, this level is basically a combination of both free 2 and free 3 and the worst part of this is that this level also happens to have 4 flags, a perfect recipe for disaster. My intuition was that I needed to immediately expand as quick as possible like in the previous level to make as much space as possible for dusk lobbers. This quickly backfired before even the first flag came, when a bungee ambush just spawned a catapult zombie right on top of an elemental shroom and a hypnonut. I ended up deciding to restart after it was pretty obvious that this unoptimal run wasn't going to work out. In my next run, I immediately turned to expanding at a steady pace to ensure we can still defend off all the zombies in the early game. However, it wasn't even really my fault I lost this game as I ended up having a hypnotized gargantuar from a hypnonut smashing through the newspapers of two newspaper zombies. I tried using time warp to send these two newspaper zombies back to the start to give our hypnonut some time to spawn hypnotized zombies. But then, oops, I guess two newspaper zombies combined to like 3000 DPS and instantly true for a football zombie as well as another hypnotized newspaper zombie. And well, there's the end of this attempt, thanks to how perfectly balanced this game is. And you know it's bad when these kind of things don't just happen once. Because right in my next game, the Copra Forest losing this time is also the hypnotized gargantuar smashing through the newspapers of several newspaper zombies, and led to an extremely quick death as Dusk Lobbers will land literally none of its shots when trying to target angry newspaper zombies. And just when you thought this couldn't possibly happen a third time in a row, well, it quite literally did. But this time, I had Time Warp ready to go and I managed to send the newspaper zombie back to the start and also got lucky by getting our own hypnotized newspaper zombie as our defense. I managed to stay lucky throughout the entire early game and managed to get up a pretty big sun producer army, but also two clusters of dusk lobbers ready to go to deal with snorkel zombies. This meant I could start using magical buster to start moving our defense forwards and start focusing on another cluster of dusk lobbers on both the top and the bottom. After that, 
I had to start getting sniper fees to maximize our damage output across all lanes as we have to get sufficient damage to deal with 4 flags worth of zombies here. We already have plenty of sun to work with, so it was all pretty smooth sailing to start replacing our primal sunflowers with more sniper peas. And thankfully, RNG just blessed this run, and we didn't really encounter any big problems up until the third flag. Unfortunately, our defense had basically hit the power output ceiling, as we are basically out of space to put anything else. And there wasn't much I could have done about this unlucky Bungie ambush which spawn a Gargantua right into the middle of our defense. That's pretty much game over for us at this point when there's also a newspaper zombie barreling down the lane, clearing everything in its path. I don't even know what to say about this level other than it just being an RNG fest, hoping you don't get cooked by newspapers or bucketheads. After that, I was basically met with yet another death by a bungee ambush spawning a catapult zombie right into our defense, but then also suffered yet another loss in the run after that, despite having a literal setup that covered the entire available board space, as newspaper zombies will still ravage down a lane by itself when we get unlucky hypnonut spawns. Funnily enough, sometimes having as many attackers as possible isn't the best way to brute force our way through a level. When we kill zombies faster, new ones will spawn sooner, reducing the time we have to get our plants back from recharge. So even though I maximized my DPS, I did not consider that I'm actually losing out on the potential instant plants I could have planted. It's actually more beneficial to move the defense back two tiles to give time for Magical Buster to recharge, so we can keep healing up our Hypno Nuts. This gives us sufficient time to stall against newspaper zombies and let a hypnotized zombie to spawn and defend for us. Even though I have less Dusk Lobbers now, since there's other zombies also now, this decreases Norco Zombies' overall spawn rates to the point where just 5 Dusk Lobbers are sufficient for the entire 4 flags. Surprisingly, sometimes less is just more in PvZ because I managed to beat the level on this attempt. 3-6 introduces the Zamboni, but the good thing this level is that the early game is completely free as it's just basic zombies and Conad zombies. To defend against Zambonis, we just need 3 sniper peas as Zambonis have 1350 health, so we can kill it with just 3 sniper shots. Just keep planting more and more sniper peas and it should be pretty easy to kill off all Zambonis as the game will rarely send 3 or more Zambonis in a single wave. Even in the final wave, there were only 2 Zambonis, so us getting 10 sniper peas was just completely overkill anyways. Okay, but seriously? Here comes another 4 flag level, and guess what's in it? Now, here's a problem that you might not have realized until I told you. Since Zambonis were the zombie with the most maximum health last level, they were always targeted first by sniper peas. Unfortunately, Buckethead Zombies have precisely 20 more hit points than Zambonis, surviving one extra pea shot. This means Sniper Peas will actually prioritize Bucketheads before Zambonis. Do you see the problem here? Now, let's pretend that Zambonis don't even exist in the first place. The fact that Newspaper Zombies are not in this level unlike in Free 4 means that other Zombies will end up spawning a lot more. This means Norco Zombies will spawn more often in this level than in Free 4, and as evident by our first attempt, I had already lost my pool cleaner on the first flag. The Snorkel Zombies only get more relentless the later we go into the level, and we end up getting overwhelmed by Snorkel Zombies very early on. The only way we were able to deal with Zombonis was with Sniper Peas to instantly eliminate them from the equation. Now, we have Sniper Peas distracted by goddamn Bucketheads, 4 flags of Snorkel Zombies again, and remember, we still don't have Lily Pads. But defending against Zombonis isn't impossible. It's just that we need to be extremely lucky to get them to go into lanes where we already have hypnotized zombies so that they can damage the zombonies enough to just die to a few more hits. Once our miraculous luck of having hypnotized zombies in lanes with zombonies ends, our defense completely falls apart and everything ends up getting crushed or frozen. So obviously, the sniper piece seemed pretty useless in this level, so would taking them out give us the solution to this level? Well, no. I mean, what else do we even possibly have to take out Zambonis? Well, in comes the Evolved Scarity Shroom which was last seen in level 710. Magnifying Grass can solve our problem, since we can unleash an extremely large burst of damage extremely quickly wherever we please. However, the main problem with this solution is that we can't make some fast enough to make up for how much we're losing to Magnifying Grass, so our journey ends immediately when our fuel tank runs out. And in case you were wondering, Snapdragons also can't get frozen by Zombonis, but they are completely ineffective at doing any significant damage to them before getting crushed. I'm almost convinced at this point Snapdragons are just a primitive version of Elemental Shrooms and are not more useful than them in any scenario. 
in my next attempt, I found this really weird setup that actually does manage to defend against Zombonis somewhat consistently. This weird combination of Shadow Pea shooters on the side lanes with two Fire Elemental Shrooms defend against Zombonis, I said somewhat consistently because it only does so if the Zombonis in the top or bottom lane. So what ends up happening is her Elemental Shroom will still end up getting crushed if a Zamboni comes in lane 2 or 5, and there's nothing I can do other than stall out the inevitable. Not only that, this setup also gets completely cooked by Bucketheads because it has like only 4 sunflowers, so we can never afford any instant kills to stop the pumpkin zombie healing cycle. I ended my live stream on that last attempt to try out more different setups in the next live stream, but unfortunately, not much really came out of these upcoming attempts other than frustration. I tried doing a new setup with two Shadow Pea shooters in every ground lane, and dealing with Zombonis with this setup felt like a literal dice roll with how close they would come to killing Elemental Shrooms. This setup quite literally wasn't reliable at all, and for the remaining Zombonis, I would need to add an extra Elemental Shroom in the adjacent lane to sufficiently defend them. This setup also doesn't consider the healer plus Zamboni combo, as Zambonis can get healed up right before they die and instead they crush our elemental shroom. We also only have 3 Dusk Lobbers in each lane adjacent to the water in this setup, so even if we happen to not lose against Zambonis that get healed or whatever, this setup still cannot deal with groups of snorkel zombies at once. I tried a bunch more setups, including one way I try to make Sniper Beast work, as well as another setup which involves Snapdragons, but none of them ended up working at all. And even as I'm editing this video now, I tried yet another setup and even the best I could push this was to the fur flag without using any assisting tools. It just doesn't seem like this level is even feasible without some bit of RNG manipulation because you either lose to Zambonis, or Snorkel Zombies, or the Swarm of Buckethead Zombies. To avoid getting stuck at this level, I chose to simply use some RNG manipulation to help us beat this level. It certainly was possible to beat the level if Buckethead variants didn't exist and we didn't have to deal with Pumpkin Zombies. So, what I did was very simple. Just turn off all zombie variants. No more healers, no more bungee ambush stupidity. It kind of defeats the purpose of this mod, but we're still in the realm of mathematical possibility right here that if we save scum hard enough, no variants will end up showing up at all, so this is a massive time saver for us. It ended up being really easy to beat this level of sniper spam, as we didn't have to deal with like 20 bucketed zombies each wave, thanks to us disabling the pumpkin zombies. So at the end of the day, I wasn't able to beat this level legitimately. But I think it should be pretty conclusive that if we turn on variants, we might have been stuck here for like 5 more hours, and it probably would have taken an eternity for us to finally reroll into the most optimal Buckethead Zombie variant RNG to finally beat this level without getting completely screwed over by pumpkin zombies at some point. It is still mathematically possible to be Brutal Mode EX Plus with only Evolve plants so far, but hopefully we won't have to turn off variants again or you say scumming again. But that's the end of part 1 of the only Evolve Plants Challenge in Adventure 2 of Boon Mode EX+. Next time, levels will only become more extreme as we move onto Fog as well as Roof, which will make this challenge even worse. Make sure to subscribe to catch my next video, and thanks to our channel members for supporting the RCCS channel. For now, have a great day, and I'll see you all 